Anomalies are what make the zone special. These strange and unexplained phenomenons are fascinating and generate many emotions in the heart of stalkers. In one hand, they are feared and avoided, for being extremely dangerous. On the other hand, they are seeked and coveted for giving birth to the amazing artifacts. But have you ever wondered just how many anomalies are out there? Because I sure did. Hello stalkers and welcome to the Anomalous Dugout. In this video we will locate and count every anomaly from Clear Sky. Without further ado, let's get started in the first area, the Great Swamps. On the way to the Clear Sky outpost, we will find a concentration of 20 spring bolts, including one in the river that leaves a small crater in the water. Further into the swamp, a cluster of nine springboards covered by poisonous air, despite the complete lack of chemical anomalies in the vicinity. At the northern village, a singular whirligig. In the area south of the fisher's house, we first find a springboard once again above a crater in the water, and then a group of 20 gas anomalies engulfed by poisonous air. At the burnt farm, one of the broken houses is home to eight burners. In the middle of the church's graveyard, a trio of gas anomalies. Under the power lines, there is a large group of 26 electrodes covered by a psi column. This area is rumored to be haunted. Up north, near the train cart, where the opening cutscene takes place, alone a springboard anomaly. East of the Renegades Depot, another field of electrodes, where I could count 24 of them. Last but not least, the extremely dangerous Fault Anomaly. It contains 20 burners spread around the ground cracks. In total, the Great Swamp features 31 springboards, 1 whirligig, 50 electrodes, 28 burners, 15 gases, and 1 psi column. Moving on to the cordon, two springboards near the military checkpoint. At the scrapyard above the Rookie village, a large concentration of 19 springboards. Three more springboards are located in the field southwest and two of them are on the small bridge. Now at the large bridge, we have two burned fusses and a space anomaly, which is basically a teleporter to the eastern collapsed tunnel. Nearby, we find eight springboards around the rocks close to the old locomotive. South of the loner base, two springboards, then three more on the hill near the grave, and two more on the same hill further north. Seven additional springboards can be seen on the road to the Dark Valley. In total, the cordon is home to 48 springboards, two banfasses, and a space anomaly. Next up is garbage. East of the entrance, a group of five whirligigs. Two more whirligigs are located south of the swamp. In the swamp area itself, a large concentration of 41 gas anomalies is located, complete with poisonous air. Inside the small forest, four whirligigs, and four more north of the swamp. 28 burners are scattered across three areas in the vehicle scrapyard, turned into a labor camp by the bandits. West of said scrapyard, seven springboards are found. On top of the locomotive, a single electro-anomaly. Another one is seen north of the bandit depot, along with a lone whirling egg. In the electrical outlet of the flea market, two additional electrodes. East of there, one whirling egg. At the excavator, three more whirling eggs. Finally, in the northwest, we find one whirling egg and a cluster with 13 electrodes underneath a psi column. In total, the garbage contains 7 springboards, 21 whirligigs, 17 electrodes, 28 burners, 41 gases, and a psi column. 
following up with the dark valley, on the hill west of the main complex, a side column. Going in the field north of there, we'll find two wheel gigs and four vortexes. Five electrodes are located in the abandoned part of the Freedom Base. Close by, a rare comet anomaly in the conveyor corridor. On the large tanks of the gas station, four chemical anomalies. Five wheel gigs are seen south of the factory. Lastly, the fault anomaly here is quite interesting. It contains nine burners, three springboards, three wheel gigs, and four vortexes. In total, Dark Valley features three springboards, ten wheel gigs, eight vortexes, five electrodes, nine burners, four gases, one comet, and one cycle. Time for the Agroprom. Up the observation tower, two vortexes. On the nearby hill around the grave, three more vortexes. Four additional vortexes are located on the eastern side of the middle hill, along with a springboard. On the western side of that very hill, two well gigs. Near the rocks in the northern field, a trio of vortexes. Two electrodes are seen at the northern power lines. One of the factory buildings is covered with a side column, and inside we'll find seven electrodes. Three annoying vortexes are sitting near the staircase to the underground. South of there, we find an electro and three more vortexes under the power lines. On the road to the Great Swamp, one wheel gig and four vortexes. Inside the duty base, a vortex, an electro, and an intermittent electro. I call it intermittent because, as you can see, it alternates between being here and completely disappearing. Two other vortexes lay near the northern entrance of the base. Close by, a claw-like anomaly which contains three vortexes. There's a broken trailer on the road with an electro and two wheel gigs. Part of the swamp, including the wooden cabin, is covered in poisonous air. That area is a minefield of chemical anomalies. I was able to count a total of 15 gases. Finally, on the road to Yentar, you'll come across three vortexes. In total, the grounds around the Agroprom Institute present one springboard, five wheel gigs, 31 vortexes, 13 electrodes including an intermittent one, 15 gases, and a side column. Moving on to the underground, we first go through a fiery corridor, in which 16 continuous burners will suddenly burst out of the pipes from the ceiling. Inside the water treatment room, the one where the controller is fought, 20 gas anomalies are scattered, as well as 8 fruit punches. Another fruit punch is in the valve room. After returning it, we flee the flooding tunnels, coming across 5 burnt fusses. Lastly, a lone fruit punch is seen at the bottom of a staircase. Now for the dreaded Lake Yendar. What remains of the lake is a putrid pond, part of which has been overtaken by an acidic fog which covers around 14 gas anomalies and a singular vortex. Near the fence and wall south of the complex, two wheelie gigs wait for prey. Going west, we find a thermal claw type anomaly, filled with 10 burners. Next to it, a gate to the complex covered by a cycle. On the other side of the factory, two wheel gigs near the garages. A patch of poisonous air is at the map corner. Oddly enough, it does not cover any chemical anomalies, but rather a single wheel gig. Entering the complex, left of the gate we have four electrodes and three vortexes. Inside one of the hangars, six electrodes. Another electro inside a trailer. One in the hangar with the valve as well. A large side column covers the building housing the entrance of Laboratory X-16. Inside, four electrodes will be found, including one at the very bottom of the staircase. In total, Yentar contains five wheel gigs, three vortexes, 16 electrodes, 10 burners, 14 gases, and two side columns. Alright, let us step in the Red Forest. 
Two electrodes are in the tunnel blown up by Strelok. The southern part of the forest features a large gravitational field, with 10 vortexes on its left side and 6 wheel gigs on its right side close to the mine tunnel. After said tunnel, we find the so-called Symbiont, which is one of the most dangerous anomalous zones. It is covered in a strong psi field capable of causing mutant hallucinations. In the center of the anomaly, a vortex, and around it, a total of 20 burners. Further in the forest, we have two fields of electrical anomalies bordering the path. The one on the west features around 16 electrodes, while the one on the east has about 17 of them. Not far from the tank, a field with 6 whirly gigs. Above the armored vehicle itself, a space anomaly, which teleports you near Forrester's place. Nearby, a concentration of 14 electro anomalies can be found. More electrodes are located on the power lines. I could count around 14 of them. Going back south, we find the mine. An electro guards the door to the anomalous dugout with two fruit punches laying close by. The collapsed tunnel is filled with toxic air, and home to six gas anomalies. The rest room is also full of poison, but does not feature any chemical anomalies. Instead it has five burners, one on each stall, as well as four electrodes. Exiting the mine we find a field of eight vortexes, half hidden in the bushes. Continuing south, the first electrical cluster with around 7 electro anomalies, and even further, another pack of electrodes, this time about 13 of them. Before moving on, let's not forget all the burnt fuss anomalies that are scattered all around the forest. Six of them are near the eastern entrance, 11 in the southern parts, four more deeper in the woods. Six additional burn fusses are found near the entrance of the mine, four close to Forrester's place, two around the symbiont, and three near the tank. In total, the Red Forest is a death trap, consisting of 12 whirligigs, 19 vortexes, 87 electrodes, 25 burners, two fruit punches, six gases, 36 burn fusses, a cyclone, and a space anomaly. Time to pay a visit to the army warehouses. In the northern parts around some rocks, there is a group of eight electrodes under a psi column. Another psi column is located above the downed chopper nearby. At the Bloodsucker village, three houses are fields of thermal anomalies. The first is next to the water tower, with eight burners in the ruins. The second is close to the mercenary camp, home to three burners. The last one is in the middle of the area, not even broken down, and with eight burners inside. The village also features an invisible two-way teleporter, both ends of which are located on the threshold of houses. Additional burner anomalies are waiting for you at the southern hill where the farm was built. I could count nine of them. A rare horizontal burner is seen at the farm itself bursting from an old furnace. At this spot we also find a burn fuss, as well as six electrodes on top of the power lines tower. The hill just south of there is filled with dangerous whirligigs, a total of 12 of them. Last stop before the base, the swamp, which is another minefield of chemical anomalies. In the toxic fog, I could identify 28 gas anomalies around the wooden house and eight more of them near the concrete pipes. All right, now the warehouses. Each of the four guard towers are covered with a psi column. The collapsed train tunnel suffers the same fate. In one of the storage buildings, we find eight very interesting intermittent burners. As you can see, these are not always active. They act just like the intermittent electrodes. Speaking of which, the other depot is filled with electrodes, including seven intermittent and four normal ones.
Outside, between two hangars, three groups of three intermittent electrodes each are also found. Last but not least, four burn fusses hang out at the train station. In total, the Army Warehouse's area features 12 wheel gigs, 34 electrodes including 16 intermittent ones, 34 burners including 8 intermittent and one horizontal, 36 gases, 5 burn fusses, a two-way teleporter and seven cyclones. Moving on to Limansk, at some point there is a wall of five large Wehrlegig anomalies blocking the main street. Inside a sewer pipe leading to a stash, a gas anomaly. Two vortexes are out of bounds, floating in the air. At the broken bridge, a springboard and a vortex. This street is filled with nine space anomalies, which will all teleport you back to its end. After bypassing them, we see two vortexes and two springboards, some in the air and some out of bounds. Two burners are found in a dumpster. In total, Limansk has poor anomaly numbers. Three springboards, five whirly gigs, five vortexes, two burners, one gas and nine space teleports. We're almost done. The hospital has no anomalies whatsoever, thus only the power plant is left. Luckily for me, it is extremely easy. The area simply has five teleporters that you can use to chase after Strelok. Well, it took a while, but we did it. Let's take a look at the final results. All combined, the locations from Clear Sky contain 848 anomalies. 93 springboards, 71 wheelie gigs, 66 vortexes, 222 electrodes including 17 intermittent, 152 burners including 16 from underground pipes, 1 horizontal and 8 intermittent, 148 gases, 16 fruit punches, 48 burn fusses, 1 comet, 14 cyclones, 11 space anomalies, and 6 teleporters, including a double way one that's invisible. Or at least, that's what I was able to count. Did you expect such numbers? Make sure to tell me your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you found this investigation interesting. Thanks for watching and good hunting, stalker.